I'm Mark Z, and you're watching Thorin, the best interviewer behind Travis Gafford. Okay, this is going to be episode four of Elitist United, talking about the EU region. We might even, just a tease for all the fans that don't really care about this shit, and or Riot executives who actually drink the Kool-Aid and believe this, we might even talk about the, the National Leagues later on, which everyone cares about, right? Yeah, just kidding, because even by your own logic, it should be in another fucking language, unless it's the UK language. National League, shouldn't it? You didn't think that one through, did you, idiots? But anyway, whatever, just just flame on Riot there for that one. I do actually enjoy the LEC, though, to be fair. I'll give them credit. That's actually been pretty good. So, right, I'll do the thing that I never do, which is actually say the names of the people, what teams they play for, and the position they play, even though, I mean, it's not like it's a mystery. So, in the bottom left-hand corner, we've got Mithy. He plays support for Oregon. You know, I would make a joke like, haha. Some people say he used to play support for TSM, not Sven. <laughs> anyway, anyway, skip past that, Mithy. We haven't got enough time to go into all that bullshit right now. That's for another time. That's for like the... I'm saving that reflections for about three years when you can really hard flame oh them. God. Yes, that's when we can really go on them. At the moment, you've got to still have a career. So, listen, Reginald, <laughs> he'll get you. His assassins are out there. Obviously, not not in the fucking mid lane, obviously, though. Again, right, enough TSM flame. <laughs> Don't distract me with the TSM flame. I, you know I can go down that path forever. So, okay, the other guest is going to be Finn, who has specifically requested not to be return, re referred to as Blomster, which, I mean, a bit insecure, bear in mind... People don't really know either name, to be fair, mate. So, you know, whatever. You do you. You start however you want. You're now in the LEC for the moment. Playing for, again, I could probably make the same joke. Playing for Rogue. So, you know, technicality on that one. But they did win a game. So here's the thing. He might actually be a good player, veteran. Don't judge him just because he's on Rogue. He might actually be one of the all right ones. So let's start the episode off, okay? So we're going to start, obviously, talking about the LEC. Let's start there, right? As much as people want to flame and the joke and all that rest, right? Finn, what would you tell us about the the rogue team that you've been able to play for now? Because obviously everyone was waiting. When were they going to win the first game? It's <laughs> happened. I mean, it's been a, an interesting week coming into this team. It started out a bit rough, but like, I think people have a really weird opinion of this team because I see a lot of flame coming around. But yeah. I guess because they're losing, so it's kind of justified. But I don't know. This team, I think it has a lot of good individual players, but nothing that keeps them together. Sort of. Wait a minute! Didn't you just ex sort of explain why people don't think they're very good there? Nah, um, I <laughs> you mean, know, indirectly before, at least. Right. Okay. I think there's been some changes now, which put the team in a in a better spot to win some okay. games. Who's the most underrated player on the team? Like, who who are we undervaluing? Do you think? I mean. I mean, I would say Hiku, I guess, just because of how great he's on the Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait yeah. a minute. That's pretty bold. Everyone, yeah. like, everyone hard flames him. Like, it, but most people say he shouldn't even be in the LEC. Yeah, I mean, when when I came to the team, he didn't look very impressive. But the last couple of days, um, like the last week, for every game he played, he improved me. I mean, he impressed me okay. more and more. I oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, obviously, Finn is the top laner. And so as a result, actually, it's quite interesting he was put in for Rogue because obviously most people thought Profit was one of the better players in the team. Anyway, keep going, mate. Yeah. I think EQ. I mean, he, he looks really bad because he doesn't do anything, but it really stems from other problems in the team, uh, most likely. Okay. I'll avoid the obvious joke there, tying back in a Mythian players that did play for TSM last year. That's... This is an LEC podcast. It's not about LCS. I don't, not everything has to be about TSM on all my podcasts. That's not actually a rule. That's not like an embroidered thing that like my mom did a tapestry up on the wall. Like Not everything's about TSM. So it, so, it does, though. I can't lie. Finn, for the love of God, please mute your mic if you're going to type like that. That's not me. It's my neighbor. Wh whoever it was, whatever. Tell him to stop typing then. It sounds like, is, there, is, there, he's, is he a lit? Is, he, I, is, is this how Rogue's made his team? You're, you, you know that old <laughs> principle? You know the old principle to explain Infinity, where if you get an infinite amount of monkeys and an infinite amount of typewriters, <laughs> eventually they'll produce Shakespeare. Is that the Rogue plan? If you get an infinite amount of National League players and have them hammer away on keyboards, eventually one of them will do the Faker versus Ryu 1v1Z outplay. Like, I don't think it's going to happen. Fly or whoever the fuck thought that plan was going to work. It's not a bad theory. Proof, but... It's not a bad theory, is it? Well, you know. Yeah. Right, Mithy. Hey. You're not someone really in a position to talk mad shit, but you probably do it anyway. What do you actually think of the Rogue team? Are they bad? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're pretty bad, but um, they're a little bit better now with uh, Vander and, uh, and, and Finn. Yes. Which was like, the move that veteran wanted all along, right? 
I mean, I, I don't really know uh, how, like, how it's gonna turn out for them, you know, because it, it, it's like kind of late in the season. But um, I mean, that's that's the thing with new teams, you know. Sometimes they don't really work out, so you gotta so, switch things around and try new things. And I mean, if this is working for them, I think they should really play the long con and uh, you know get good as a team. And yeah, I mean, but yeah, that's what it is. Fine. I don't think they're gonna make playoffs. But, Bold prediction. <laughs> I mean, yeah. If you don't make playoffs, then that, that's that's pretty much it, you know. Veteran. This is the Vander move. At least was the move you wanted, right? Yeah. So the, the thing with their Ultra Liga team is that their uh, jungle support makes so many plays in the mid game to accelerate the game forward that uh, you just don't see uh, the LEC team doing and. Just putting Vander on the team, you automatically saw Ignal was just like permanently looking at a grey screen that game. It wasn't enough, but like at least making those picks was really, really good for them and something that we wouldn't, we weren't seeing that level of proactivity before the way the roster was. Finn wasn't like a gigantic part of those mid game plays in Ultra Liga, but in the game, uh, in the game versus Misfits that they actually won. Uh, his groupings and his picks, though admittedly it was a comp that made it really easy to follow up on those kinds of flanks, were actually really critical to accelerating the game forward. And uh, Profit, the power that Profit had was just from straight up winning his side lane and making a lot of pressure uh, that way. He wasn't really like transitioning that into like a flank mid or anything like this, right? And the, 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 when I saw Finn do that in the second game, that was honestly the first time I'd seen Rogue make that kind of grouped five man play from their top laner. So I, I don't think necessarily that Profit is like a worse player. I think they're really good in different ways. Uh, and I do think that they've had something added uh, with these moves that, that we didn't see them do beforehand. And it's really promising going forward, to be honest. Okay. Uh, so, Mithy, let's get the Orihan part out of the way, shall we? So, before the season, most people, I thought, had pretty high expectations for Orihan. Like, most people thought they had a very good roster. I do notice it was more like analysts and pros who had them really high up on the power ranking type things. You know, fans were more in the middle, maybe. What, what do you think were the initial problems coming in this, into the season? Like, why, did, why was it such a slow start? Um, I mean, I think for the most part, uh, me and Patrick into a few games, and um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's still a long way to go, but yeah, I think uh, like some of the games we lost, I think we went like what 2 4 at the start, and two of the games that we lost was because me and Patrick did run it down, so and even in some of the games we won, uh, like we were doing it too, so I don't know, it, it's it just kind of uh, I guess like we make less mistakes now in the bot lane, we have like a little bit more structure there, and uh. Uh, every other lane is like you know very strong, so we're kind of like helping each other as a team, and uh, everyone pulls their weight. Uh, or if someone doesn't pull their weight one game, then someone else pulls a little bit more, you know. And that's okay. the that's the goal. So I guess uh, now, nowadays it's like it's gone better for me and Patrick, I'd say. So yeah, that that was. I feel like that that's a big like a big thing. Like being as you've obviously played with all these different ADCs, and usually you know it's gone pretty quickly. You've got had a really good bot lane. How how do you contrast Sheriff slash Patrick with some of your past ADCs you've played with? Well, I mean Sheriff inexperienced in uh, like playing. Uh, like he, he's he's just really really good mechanically and like a really good solo queue player. Like he. He plays, I don't know, he just plays really, really fucking well and he's not afraid of making aggressive moves and playing different champions and, you know, like he, he's up for anything and that's, that's what his strength is and I guess his weakness is just like he's never been in a position where uh, he's like being the guy that everyone has to look up to and be like, okay, you have to carry us and you have to lead the team kind of thing. He's just always been like, you know, sitting back in his chair and uh, hoping things turn the right way. So he he misses that, you know? yeah, like okay. having. Also, that, hits UK for fuck's sake, but yeah, keep going. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not blaming it on him. You sure. Know, I'm just like no, that, I get it. That it's totally logical. Experience in that in that sense yeah. that he's not really a leader, uh, but I mean, he's also very young, so that's kind of oh. normal. And uh, uh, yeah, like I think that's like probably his biggest weakness is uh, not you know having. Not like, haven't been uh, alive long enough. And play yeah, pretty much. Yeah, not yeah. played against good players and in a good team with a good structure. And yeah, that 
that kind of like is something he's uh, trying to pick up right now. Okay. Like yeah, veteran, was... with the with the caveat that obviously, again, it's a former H2K player, so people yeah. are going to assume you're going to be biased, but you probably should be. You know the person better, right? So go on, give us the, the veteran scouting report on, on Sheriff. Yeah, I mean, what Miffy said is really, really accurate. And uh, for his position on H2K, there were definitely games where he was the one that had to carry and the team was definitely built around that. Like, for example, our final match versus Rock App was basically everybody you protect the jinx. But... um. But the communication aspect of it always came from uh, Sprattle, from Selfie, from other people on the team. And definitely he wasn't the one that had to step up and take leadership in that sense. But he was, out of all of the players, he was definitely the one who we never had an issue with when it came to like champ pool. He was never a guy who was just kind of sitting there and waiting for things to happen. He was always a guy who was willing to be proactive in game. He was always willing to put in the work. He had the most solo queue games by far of everybody on the team. When... Uh, the meta was transitioning to mages. He was spamming Rise and Vladimir until he could play those to perfection. Like he, he, out of all of them, he was definitely the player that had like the most potential to like keep soaring. And it was, it was really good from like a rookie perspective. I only really think that there was like one time where he felt out of his element, and that that was the initial playoff series uh, versus Vitality. That was yes. the only time where he showed like any nerves at all, and they really like washed over him after the first game anyway. So I was really impressed with him back then. I'm still really impressed with him now. And uh, even back then, I thought that he was going to end up being a top three ADC. And I think if Jizuki hadn't had the phenomenal first few weeks that he had had, uh, Sheriff would have gotten rookie of the split back then. And I'm actually really glad that they're doing really well now. And I also think Miffy's assessment of why Origin were losing in the first place is somewhat accurate. Like, you guys were being caught in transition. And admittedly, it was the bot lane that was getting caught a lot. Um, but the transitions you guys were going for and the rotations you were going for were actually good ones. Like the way that you wanted to get the map set up was good. Uh, you were just you were just getting caught out with lazy parving. And there were some games, like the Malzahar game, where maybe the draft was a bit of an issue, but there was mm -hmm. never something... Uh, I, I disagree. I think... Uh, you guys couldn't control either side lane at that point. Like you guys couldn't match any side lane at that point. You were being permanently pressured. No, not really. I, I mean, I, yeah. I, I completely disagree. But I, I, the Malzahar game. Uh, what the, do you think went wrong in the Malzahar game then? Well, for one, we like the bot lane was getting absolutely murdered, and then uh, we didn't really snowball our lead as a bot duo when their matchup was unplayable. And then came, I come to mid game, we made like some, like I made like a few bad decisions in the mid game, which made us like not. Uh, get the control as early as we could have and then once we actually uh, had them choked out and uh, they couldn't really play they tp behind us and we had a team fight and i like i like yeah I, the tp I really fight. really really the fucked TP up fight. the fight the fight yeah. was horrible for them they would have lost 100 but i i played like like really really subhuman like i mean subhuman like and then they won the fight and they they won like after that we they won the game yeah I agree, it definitely wasn't your best game, but for example, the Ergot flank occurred because you guys weren't able to match him on the side lane and you guys weren't able to match the Blank on the side and they always had enough pressure to go no, for these we, we, that they the Blank couldn't, The Blank couldn't move from the side lane. The she Blank couldn't. couldn't move from top when she was permanently yeah. shoving even the Geo lane on the tower? Like, you guys were never no. leaving past tower in that game. If you go back and check it. Uh, oh, okay, then, I mean, I, Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm not... He's, he's I'm, not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna I mean, argue. Like, that hesitation. It's, it's, it's whatever, you know. Sorry, right, uh, sorry. Right. You if, know, if, we'll, if you we'll think, let the fans think, decide. If you, think, if you think that way, then that's that's like okay. I, I will agree with you. I do agree. It wasn't like your best game. You are the expert like analyst. Like also. Also. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I know what it was like with fucking Bjergsen in that team, mate. I think I, I have a sense for what it was like now. Okay, Matthew, do, what about this then? Give us a sense now for where Orji is. So if that was how it started. Is, are things all at full power now? Is this team actually going to be like the best in the LEC? Is it going to be a top two, top three team for real? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think we can win against every team, really. Uh, but we are no, we are no perfect team or anything close. We can lose to anyone, and we make uh, a bunch of mistakes. And we're not like super strong at uh, playing from behind. Uh, we're not. Uh, like super great at creating over like we, we still have a long way to go and i think it's going to take like a whole year before we are before i consider us like a uh like a, a overall well-rounded team 
but for now we're we're doing better than some other guys in the like some other teams in the league and i mean that's just uh, the hard work and we just have to keep working i mean you did beat g2 it was unbeaten they were supposed yeah. to be the super team i mean they were they were really really running it down i think so it's like it's hard i mean at some point someone had to beat them and it happened to be us so that's good for us because the win is important uh like having a win against g2 is like really good for our sure. playoffs chances uh but yeah i mean i think they just had to lose at some point it's pretty un like it's pretty rare that you go 18-0 in bo ones you know like it's, of course, it's not of course yeah yeah I, I think that's like very 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 unlikely and, I mean, uh, even even the eighteen zero Fnatic should have lost this one game to this like idiot team called Orihan who just like threw the whole game completely and didn't know what the fuck they were doing. You remember that one? I mean, I, I think they they should have lost more than one game. But the thing with Fnatic yeah. that year was that they were the only team that stayed the same. They so they they had like this really insane spring split run with Steelback, and then they changed to Reckless, so yes. they got an upgrade there. And and then they were already a structured team, whereas every other team in the league was a new team in that year yes, sure. for the summer split so what ended up happening is that they were like really far ahead of everyone else but this year in spring split there's not really a team that has uh, like been that team except for vitality but then vitality uh they also changed one player which i don't know if it was an upgrade or not i mean it's hard to say because it, it's like he's a korean so it takes a while you know he seems pretty sure. good but uh they were not a dominant team before they were just like a really good team you know but not okay. as dominant as Fnatic was back then. So, yeah, I think, like, it's hard to compare both years because we're in Spring Split and not in Summer Split right now. Okay. Uh, and it's hard to get go 18-0 in Spring Split because all teams are not, like, that good. Sure. Okay, Finn, give us some of your thoughts. What do you think of Origin? Origin? I think, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, you you didn't want to say well-rounded, but I think you're pretty well-rounded compared to a lot of other teams. I think you don't really have a weak spot, in a, in a sense. I think a lot of other teams have like really exploitable like hosts in their playstyle. I don't think any team right now in the league is like super super good. Generally, I think the level went down from last year, and right now teams are like figuring out how to play the game again. Uh, it's the it's the it's what I felt like, but I think generally Origin has two really good solo laners if they're on on point, and I think you have a really solid mid too as well that you can play around and. Uh, can always play good games from that. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, have a good team. Yeah, <laughs> not gonna lie. You no, were insanely good. modest up until that point, because like no one's pointed out that you've, you've beaten both the top two teams in the last three games, for example. Well, if you remember, Mithy is the guy uh, where it, it, the way the the translation, like the Rosetta Stone, to understand Mithy goes like this. Like, he never says that he's good and other people are good. It's either he's shit and they're even worse than him. It's like the forgiven mentality. Like you, everyone's just really bad and he vaguely knows how to play the game, right? That's kind of fair, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's pretty fair, yeah. Okay. That's, that's a good way of looking at it. Right, what about us then? So obviously, like, we have limited time with Mithy at this segment of the show, so we can't talk about every team. So pick a team, Mithy, that you think would be interesting at the LEC that you'd like to talk about. Who, what team catches your eye or has some interesting quality to them? Uh, a good quality or a bad quality? Or... Either way, that's up to you. Just what do you find interesting? I mean, I think it's interesting to talk about Misfits, yes. Fnatic. Let's do the uh, Misfits one then, because obviously I'm, Misfits started we're playing, the league. I think we're playing both teams. No, we're you, playing, do, you get uh, both of them next Fnatic. week. No, we're playing SK Fnatic next week. No, you play Fnatic Misfits next week, right? Well, unless unless League PD okay. is wrong, but okay. okay. You, could, you might be right, you might be right, then maybe they just got it wrong on that one. But Okay, so Misfits obviously started the split great. They've since lost four in a row. They've even lost to some not so good teams. Last week, at least, they, you know, it was G two and Orhan. What do you actually? Why is this team not a top team at the moment? Mm, I don't know. That's why I want to talk about them. I don't. Know. I don't really know. Like, I feel they like should they be should be in your mind. Good, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think so. Like, uh, I, I thought so when when they first came over. I thought Gorilla was was bad, uh, judging from scrims. But everyone had had a long break, right? Uh, so it, it was like. Everyone was getting into it, and okay. uh, yeah, I was watching Gorilla POV stream like this other day. I think they lost that game, but he was playing really, 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 really well. 
So uh, yeah, I don't know. I like overall, like I thought that was the weak spot, and I think that guy is good now. So uh, I, yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm just overall surprised that they're losing some games. Okay. Give us some thoughts, veteran. I don't like, think they have any direction mid game. I don't think uh, Gorilla is going to give that to them, and Maxdor is already on the other other iteration of Misfits that also collapsed once twenty minutes passed in the game. And I don't think they made any changes to hit except for possibly Soaz. That would do that, but Soaz hasn't been on that many champions where he's able to call in that manner. Like the Kennen, the Kennen game obviously was one way you could quite clearly see Soaz's impact on their strategy in this way. Um, way back on Fnatic, he was able to do it on Nar and Jarvan all the time. There was actually one season where if you just banned those two, uh, Fnatic lost, and if those two got free, Fnatic won. Uh, but that's like the only point on the team right now uh, that could potentially save them at this stage of the game. Otherwise, the roster changes didn't really add this big problem Misfits also had last year. So there are definitely metas where Misfits would do really, really well. If the meta was like a lot faster than it was right now, uh, then maybe they could still do really well if Gorilla is now over that like kind of stretch that Miffy was saying that he was having initially. Um, but as it is, they're directionless at a very important time in the game, and I, I think this roster is always going to go that way. Okay. Right, Finn, here's what we do on this one, mate. I understand that this was a team with some really good players. Some of them have been champions before. We understand wait, they're wait, good wait, players. Please, yeah, go on. Wait, please, can you murder the guy that is sitting next yeah. to you? Here's the, the, like, Finn, really I'll annoying. explain. Let's, let, let's leave, let me just give you the pro tip quickly, Finn. You know what I... T no, listen, listen, Finn. Like, just take listen. this fucking keyboard and smash it. Listen, the listen to what I'm saying, you fuck. Listen, <laughs> when I told you earlier to mute your mic because you're typing, you didn't, like counter what I said by saying I'm not the one typing. Like, no. the point is, if you mute your mic, we still don't hear his typing. You get the point? So I get if, the point, man. Yeah, so when, like, I'm not flaming you. If, if you would talk, just unmute, it'll, then we can hear you then. But in the yeah. meantime, the point is, you know, we're listening to them, so just uh, give your thoughts now, but then after just mute. Sparks. Yes, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I could don't see Miffy it. ready to explode for Don't it. worry about it, yeah, no. I was, I would kept wondering myself, <laughs> I promise, I couldn't, I didn't want to jump in, you know. So, Finn, come on, give us your thoughts on the Misfits team. On the Misfits team. Because luckily, I mean, this is a team you have to sort of flame a bit, right? I mean, yeah, I have the rights, I guess. But I think, generally, they look really uncoordinated when they play. Like, the mid to the 2 look really off. And I think, I mean, Soas is a really good player, and I respect him a lot. But right now, he's not doing too well. Like, I don't think he's putting a lot of pressure on the map or in lane, uh, as he used to be. And I, I just think if their bottom doesn't get super head early, then they won't finish out the game. Yeah. I mean, I, like, you know, I, I did listen to a lot of that, but I did also just keep thinking over and over again. Those membrane keyboards back in the day were fucking brilliant, weren't they? They were fucking amazing, weren't they? Whoever invented a mechanical keyboard, why do they get to live, eh? It's unfair. Anyway, Where's sorry, I got distracted for a second there. But no, is that fair? Is that she saw us having issues in Misfits as well? I mean, I just felt playing against him. I think we got signed as a matchup, and I just feel like he didn't put any pressure at all. Okay. Uh, but maybe but he, he had a bad day. I can't really say because I haven't played him much enough. Sure. Uh, so what about this this observation here? Their team right now doesn't like 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 veteran said. It doesn't really have like a a clear identity or a clear direction of how they want to play. Therefore, players like Soas who are really good at making team plays and like having a plan in his head before he even starts playing the game or Max Lore, which is kind of similar are not really or gorilla which I, i'm assuming is kind of similar to are not really showing their true strengths because they're lacking that that like initial synergy that you don't get from players that have been not like they have been playing for a long time in many, like many different teams with or with one team for a long time. You have like, like something built up, and then when you join another team and you have to like plug and play, it's like harder, you know. To just does does that actually? Okay, is that in any way an indictment on like the coaches, for example? Because I know, for example, I'll give you an, an analogy in CS:GO, for example. What tends to happen is either your team is literally just really good from day one, like the chemistry just is there, or it's really hard to build up. Like there doesn't tend to be like a bit a between the two, you know. So what what do you think it's like for league? Uh, I mean it it depends. Like I don't I don't know. Like this meta right now, I guess it's 
if you get like young players that are just really good at, at like the game and then like one or two guys that can lead it's like really easy but yeah, if okay. if you have like some a lot of veterans that are still good at the game but that have ha like built their routines and their ways of playing and stuff if it takes a, a, like it takes longer it also depends on the coaching stuff i guess i mean i don't i don't really know what happens behind the scenes so it's not really up to me to say if like I, i'm not a coach i don't know if it's it would be easy or it would be hard you know but it sounds hard to me just to, like like you know, have to establish systems and stuff from the get go and doing that to veteran players is like not really easy so yeah i guess it's like a little bit of a pickle you know to to get over that I will veterans? say I'm not sure if it's like an identity issue. I think Misfits as a team have never had like a super strong idea of how to play the mid game out, like as the game itself, not like yeah, some but, sort of identity. But it's not it's not Except Misfits anymore. It's, it's the Vivian, it's Soas, yes. it's Gorilla. Yeah. You know, you're not talking you're not saying like you're saying Misfits as if it's like just because they have their the the same t shirt doesn't mean it's the same team, you know, like they yeah, have yeah, but, but here's the thing. at world so, at world finals, like Gorilla has been at world finals. No, no, no. Twice, I, I get I that. I get that. Right. But... Soas has been once, you know, so like you can't say they don't know how to play mid game because it's, it just like, it just, it just doesn't, I, I can't digest that, you know? It oh, yeah. Okay. Work. So this is okay. So they made all these changes, right? The only addition of which we know of where some sort of like strategic element actually gets talked about in game from them is Soaz. Max Law was there on all the other iterations of Misfits that also had this problem, right? So he's not someone you add to the roster to fix this problem. He's not necessarily someone that that solution is going to come from, right? Soaz is the only one that I identify as that because Febivan doesn't talk in game. Uh, Gorilla was led by Prey, and Prey was doing all of that in-game strategy. We have so many people saying this, and it was also kind of evident even if you just look at like draft strategy way back when. Like they always put Prey on uh, engaged champions, and Gorilla was not on that duty for the vast majority of it. Um, he did have some Alistair gains, but he was never like Ignar, for example. So you can't reasonably expect it to come from Gorilla if you've read anything about him. You can't reasonably expect it to come from Febivan. Maxwell was already there, so that's why I always identify Soaz as the one that you can reasonably expect it to come from. And Hans Sammer, obviously, like that's being talked about a lot, that Hans doesn't really speak in his lane and this was an issue when they bought mickey x there because mickey x was never like the big leader and the really good thing on g2 is that perks was very vocal mickey x isn't so there is leadership coming in there and mickey x can actually just be like the mechanical god that he has been so this is why i identify it that way and this is why i think it's important to remember that misfits always had this problem because maxwell has actually always been there like even the initial spring split when misfits were doing really really well there was always a point where they just kind of like grouped around baron and then that was all that they did like they just pushed out and they grouped baron pushed out grouped baron there was literally nothing else but that there was nothing any more creative than that and misfits games always slowed down at that point maxwell was there for that maxwell was there for last year when they had the really strong split yeah, okay okay, okay. Wait, so, sorry I, I have to i have to interrupt you so regarding, regarding your argument yeah then from what what you just said, yeah, they have enough game knowledge because yes. Soas Soas knows, like you just said, Soas knows, um, yes, and yeah. and the other players know half or like a little bit, you know. So in b between all of them, they should be able to build and craft a strong enough system for mid game and late yeah. game that should work. So, so I. So, so you would you would then no need problem. so as yeah so you would then need so as to like micromanage basically no, everyone you just need no that's the thing you know you don't you can't micromanage people in game this is this yeah. is not like this is yeah. not how League of Legends works you I agree. have to just understand the game and help uh, like your teammates understand the game in the same way you do and then eventually you can start playing so you mean as a okay because because you've I know you do this because I've even seen you like help out players and all that stuff but is it like really supposed to be Soaz's job to help out all the players with their game knowledge at this aspect of the it game it doesn't have to be Soaz's job like the coach can yeah guide Soaz to do that if he wants to you know it's yeah. like it's 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 a matter of everyone has to put in their part and then it works like the players can ask you know i do agree with it's, you there it's, it's i don't think 100%. like i think this this team just needs Needs to like just needs more time, I think. 
Hopefully, yeah. Um, they only just changed coach, but Jesses was there for last year as well as an assistant they coach. Just changed the coach? Oh, you yeah, mean, like, Hussain was co just... head coach last year. Oh. Jesses was assistant coach, and yeah. this year Jesses is head coach. So they kind of like switched coach. Because if we're talking about people who will input like to actually help transition. The I mean, game yeah, I, I, I have no idea what's what like this. Behind the scenes, so I, I don't know like what Jess is doing, what Hussein was doing, or yeah. Whoever. It's just that the only big additions is my point. Is like all of these players that I don't think are going to add that game knowledge. And if that game knowledge was not already flowing down from where it was before, this is why I keep bringing up Soas because that's the only place where I see it coming from. But is it really his responsibility to do this kind of deal? And that's that's basically the crux of my argument. If he wants to win, it's it's everyone's responsibility. Yeah, I mean, he did just make this that not, tweet after the last loss like, where he uh, was basically saying to the effect of that he kind of has to do it himself at this point. And then he yes. corrected that with like, I don't mean to flame my team. No, say this. I veteran, just... we all know there's two. Th here's the good thing about when Soaz is in a team. It's like you, it's, they don't need a reality show. You just go on his Twitter and as soon as they lose, it starts going badly and screams. You see him do a tweet and then he always does the follow-up tweet where he goes, <laughs> right, he stops for a second. He goes, shit, wait a minute. This isn't 2012. I've just hard flamed all my pro teammates. He goes, I didn't mean to call out any of my teammates when I said that we're all terrible bad and the team's fucked. And uh, I love Reckless still. Oh, so shit, I'm not in this team anymore. Uh, whoever's fucking in this team, yeah, you know, I still love them as well, Matt. And it wasn't my fault, P.S. Like, like, come on, man. I do love it, though, when he does that, because, like, you get some insight. You at least know that it, they're not all putting on... You know, obviously, the worst thing is when people lose and they just pretend everything's great, don't they? Like, mm -hmm. that's that, that just kills you inside. There's no way. Come on. But that, I mean, but, I, mean we, I don't really use social media, so it, it, it's like I, I don't, I don't really know about these tweets, or I don't. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 uh, sure. it's it's kind of weird <clears throat> from Paul to to type anything because it always gets uh, misinterpreted. Especially because, uh, unfortunately, like his persona doesn't really mesh with like Americans. He comes up very emo, unfortunately. And so, yeah, if I were uh, you though, Mithy, I think you've done the right move, mate. I'd just keep your personality as far away from the public as possible. Just show them that you're a brilliant player. In the game, you're really good. If you show I mean, too much your personality. I remember it, when you got banned, mate. Like that could go bad. So, you know, <laughs> just stay I think, clear. I think, I, think I've changed, I think I've changed quite a bit, honestly. Fair enough. But, uh, but Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think I think Paul is. Like I mean, you can see by, by how he how he is that he really, really just wants to win, you know, and that mm -hmm. that's what drives him. And sure. he just wants to show he's good, and he wants to show how good his teams can can get to be, you know. So uh, I mean, it, I think it's kind of normal in like especially all these players that have been playing for a while that sure. uh, you know they get really pissed off when things are not really going the way they want them to be. But right. you know that 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 energy. It's good, you know. That's that's what you need. If you yeah, don't big get energy. Yeah, if you don't get pissed off when you're not doing well, then that's where the that's where the big problems come in, you know. That's that's a team that just is waving the, the flag, you know. It's over. It's probably contributed to why he's stuck around for so long. Like he's never really been like satisfied and he's never had the day where he's been like, Yeah, I guess it was okay to like lose and stuff. Yeah, he's I, always I, actually being motivated. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's why that's what that's why like you know, summing everything up, that's why Misfits has surprised me so much, you know, because I, I see the, uh, you know, I, I see, like, what they could, you know, in theory yeah. achieve. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Okay, but, but before you have to go, just tell me this. Who is the best support in Europe right now, in your opinion? <laughs> uh, I think the Koreans are pretty good. Uh, I think the Koreans are at the best right now. Uh, yeah. So Ignar and Gorilla, yeah? And dreams. And, and dreams. Oh, and dreams. Okay, we're including yeah. him as well, right? Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, That's he ran good. it down one game, but he, he, I think he's really good. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I think those three are the like they're the more more well rounded, I would say. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I don't think like Mickey was pretty hyped. I don't think he's been playing that well. I think his uh, his weakness right now is that he's trying really hard. To be part of the group, I, I don't know how to explain it, but uh, like I, he's, I know. he's like, er, like they're all the they're players are really good and they showcase a lot of skill. They're trying to and pop then, off all of them at the yeah, same and time. Yeah, and then Mickey is trying well, too right? hard, you know, instead yes. of just like just, just you know just playing to win, you know, okay. and then he will just showcase his, his skill by by himself, you know. But I think he he can be really good and. Uh, 
and I think for the most part, I don't. Yeah, I, I no one really comes up to my mind. I think Healy is really really good, but from 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 what I've witnessed in scrims and stuff, in like certain champions that he plays, yeah. and but but I, I think just the team, like the team, like Fnatic is the same thing. Like we were talking about Misfits, Fnatic is the same thing. You know, like. Uh, good players, team, but the identity doesn't make sense. If the team just yeah. doesn't work, then it's it's just hard to like. No one is gonna be good in that team, you know. Unless yeah. you have like a super selfish player that only plays for himself and doesn't completely like, completely disregards team calls and just wants to play to like look good in the camera and not really to win, then then you will never see a good player in a team that's losing. That's my opinion. What about so, Vander? What do you think of him? Vander. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really uh, early to say, but I, I don't I don't think he's uh, like he, I don't think he's as good as the the Koreans. Yeah, I think the Koreans are just more well rounded. Okay, right. If think you need twice to go, if it's there. Yeah, if you need to go, you can go now, bit. Is that right? Uh, are, are you kicking me? I can. I can. No, you can stay for a bit no, longer. Yeah, yeah right, let's keep going then. I'll, I'll do like. Okay. You know, I can do fifteen. Minutes. All right, let's keep talking a little bit more about Fnatic then. So okay. even though they have managed to scrape out some wins they're still clearly in a lot of trouble right veteran uh yeah i mean they're still nowhere near where they want to be to to be feel comfortable about playoffs i don't even think miffy feels like completely comfortable about playoffs yet with their score even though they just vanquished the best teams in their league and Fnatic are definitely far away from it and the sk loss is probably i don't feel that comfortable about playoffs but i yeah. i definitely like that's that's the team's goal uh the team goal was to you know like uh try and make playoffs so you know i i, I believe in our goal and i believe in my team so you know you i just you have to go all the way. I, I predicted you top three right at the start, and now Fnatic, who I thought was going to be top two, has collapsed. So you're basically a top two prediction right now. So top two, yes. I mean that that'd be nice. That'd be nice. But uh, the goal is playoffs, so everything else is just kind of a bonus. Sure. There you go. There you go. But yeah, with Fnatic, who have failed me entirely in in the predictions, unless they just about scrape playoffs, aren't even looking like a. That's going to be a guaranteed thing right now. I think going 0-3 to SK in one split is probably doing a number on them at this point. And I think even the... SK is a good team, actually. I think they, are, they, are, good. they are turning out to be surprisingly good, but they definitely probably looked at this week as like an easy week, you know? And they the first two losses for them... It was versus Splice and SK that they played against this week. Would you not yeah. say that would be Splice one of the easy is underrated weeks? Too. I think Splice is underrated. You think Splice what, is underrated? In what context, though? I'm actually go, go really give us, in that. Like, give us yeah. first of all, what you think what I don't know, people I think, are thinking of Splice and what you think of them. I don't know. I think they're pretty solid. Like, I feel like sometimes they lack some individual performance when they like, or like really losing lanes or something. But overall, I feel like they're pretty well structured in how they want to play the game. They 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 masterclassed us in one of like when we played against them, and yeah, overall in scrims they they seem like they. They know, like they, they kind of like have a, like they they follow a, a system, you know. Like I, I feel like they're they're pretty well structured and they can take games of anyone. Uh, so I, I don't think they're a bad team. I think they're the only the only team that is like okay. pretty looks pretty shitty to me are, are Rogue and XL. Like those are the only teams that are. Yeah. <laughs> They're they're just not, not looking yeah, that great. I, I don't know. I don't know about the new rogue. You know, like maybe the new rogue is good. You know, like with I mean, to be fair, but... Fnatic and Misfits can look very shitty as well. It's just as we said, you know, in theory they have good players and you hope they get it together, etc. But I, I, I yeah, see what you mean. Fn that, Fnatic sense. and Misfits are not looking like structured right now, but uh, SK and Splice are. You know, that's that's my my opinion. You okay. know, I, I think Misfits and Fnatic might have more ceiling than the other two they have better yeah. players sure so yeah yeah but, sense, but, right? I, but i but i think splice and sk are actually a better like all, better teams. all around teams yeah. right now yeah makes sense yeah so, well, you, i mean i'll yeah, definitely agree the two teams he played look way more headless than either of the teams that we're discussing right now like sk especially with the way self-made and crown Shot have recently been stepping up like they they actually seem like a pretty well-rounded team and they were actually controlling the game really really well in both their games this weekend. I don't think Vitality were expecting anything like that. Did you think that they were like a team that looked like they would beat Vitality and Fnatic this weekend before this weekend? Or uh, I think it's always hard against SK. I feel like they're pretty good, yeah. But uh, I mean, Vitality is like, I don't know, they're such a strange team. They're so good that they're like so strange <laughs> with how they play, you know? But uh, 
yeah, so so I, I kind of expected Vitality to win. So yeah. does, here's the thing though: does the Vitality playing style endure? Like, can they keep playing the style and actually still be a top? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, it's, not, it's not like a brain dead style or anything. I think they're 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 just good. They're just good players, and uh, they like believe in in themselves, and they're like very <laughs> confident players. And uh, I mean, it kind of shows, you know, like they. I feel like they're a pretty good unit. I, I like. I, I really. I really uh, have a lot of respect for Vitality. I think they're a pretty like good mindset team. You know, they, they they're good. I think they're not branded or anything like that, or like over aggressive or whatever it is. Right. What about this then? So, being as Mithy mentioned about five different teams, <laughs> I'm going to give you the option. You pick the one you want to comment on. So, is there is there a team among them that you want to give us some thoughts on? Maybe perhaps Excel because you're going to play them next week, right? Me? Yeah. I mean, Excel is the team we've practiced a bit because, I mean, when I came, there wasn't that many teams that wanted to scream us, but I think they will change now. Uh, but I think Excel overall looks... I mean, they look a bit lost when they play, at least what I've seen. I think unless they have a really good performance with their drum schedule or like they really carry without a pop performance, I don't think they... They don't have any reliable ways to win the game, generally. Okay. Do you know much about their top player? I mean, I think Expect is really solid, but I don't think... I mean, yeah, the insane early Baron Steel, which was really sick, but I don't think he's the player that will put his team on his back and carry. I think he's a, team, he's a very good player that will perform well in a good team, but I think on a bad team, like most top players, he will look pretty bad. Miffy played of Expect, actually, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, did. You got opinion now? Uh, I mean, I think he's a great guy and uh, a, a, a great player too. I think he performs Just, very well on stage uh, all the time, and uh, uh, I think does everything you tell him to. Uh, he, he, yeah, he even yeah, had I mean, comms, no? Uh, well, yeah, did I, he I have think, good communication? Um, he he communicated the essential. But uh, I mean, he, he English is not really his first language, course, so he yeah. had a hard time, you know, expressing further. But uh, I feel like he was, he, he, I feel like he was pretty good. I, I really, I mean, I think he just worked very well with uh, how we played because in G two back then we we kind of like we had gone through like this step by step system of how we want to play in all these situations. So we didn't really talk at that point about macro. We just like assigned the lanes, and everyone knew uh, what had to be done at every point of the game. Uh, so it, it was like, yeah. But 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 I think he he lacks like the leadership to like be in a in a like a not great team, and you know, take like you know take on the team in his backpack and and carry. I mean, because that is that. a factor to mention, actually, isn't it? Where, you know, you said earlier how generally you think, like, you won't be a top player on a bottom team unless you're basically kind of, like, playing for score, you know, trying to just look good yourself. Isn't yeah. that also a factor, though? Like, if you're on a bad team and you're one of the best players, to have any chance, you have to basically kind of play through yourself. So you have to be able to, on some level, call around yourself and communicate well enough to give to, that the team can actualize you, right? Yeah, I mean, as a, like... Yeah, as a yeah, it, it it's it's hard. I mean, I, I don't. I guess it's kind of harder as support in jungle. But uh, I mean, Ignar does it, so I have a lot of respect for him for that. But generally speaking, there's there's like the way where you know you play like really really selfless selfless. Uh, I mean, selfish solo queue style, and uh, you just you know you try to get the most farm. You try to be there in the team fights, and then you just play them well whenever they happen at any random point. You know. Yes. They just like they just kind of happen, and then you're just there, and you just do like good because you're fed and you have good mechanics. Or you know you try to actually play a real game of League of Legends, and you try to play with your team and uh, make like construct a plan and execute and build into that something. That sounds like too and much then, work. Sounds and like then yeah, work. I mean it's, it's hard for all these <laughs> yeah. new teams because course, when you yeah. do that, you always make a mistake somewhere. Someone gets caught. You know, uh, anything can happen, and things don't go your way, and then you have like this plan in your head. And then something else happens, and then you just like you know, woo, and then it just all like you look bad, you know. But it's, I mean, that's what happens to me, you know. But uh, like, uh, I guess it's just like the different personalities or different ways of like approaching league. I approach it in the second way, where I, I want to have things planned out. But uh, you know, other people can you know withstand like just playing for themselves and stuff. So okay. 
Right, along these lines, then, if we keep that discussion going, so obviously coming from Worlds and into the this split, people emphasised like you know how strong like solo lanes would be and how individual players would be so good. So then, why is it so incredibly team focused when the actual LCS is good? Well, LEC now. Why is why is team elements been more important seemingly? Because as we say, like SK and Splice on paper shouldn't be able to compete with Fnatic, Misfits. You know, individually, there's there are better players on the other teams. So. Why, why do you think the meta at the moment is reliant on team in that sense? As is well, anyone. I don't think that individual skill is like a big difference in, in pro level. There's not like a huge difference, just individual skill, 1v1. That's like, it's okay. not really how the game works, yeah. you know? Sure. There's a lot about setting up for your jungler, setting up for your lanes and how your, your lane, one lane has prior or pressure and then uses that to relieve another lane or to create or build up something somewhere. And that's kind of early game system. Is what makes the good players look even like look really fucking good because nice. they use those systems to create even bigger leads for their lanes, you know. So in like that case, like, okay, a question I have for you in that case is: everyone else thinks G two just has all the best players and they just do whatever the fuck they want and they all just go in whenever they want. They're not doing that then in that case, according to what you just said. They have well, a whole system of players and they're structured and they know what they're doing, uh, right? Well. That's not necessarily true. I mean, in in terms of G two, um, they they did just outlane their opponents uh, in a lot of the in a lot of the games. But if at the, like that's also because you know they played well and the other team you know didn't really play laning phase to a uh, standard. You know, but once that standard is hit for both teams, you know you need to take the extra step, yes. and that extra step is what makes your laning phase actually reliable and your early game actually reliable when you play other good teams, you know, that you reach that level of early game strategy. If that makes sense? I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, no, it, so. it, it does make sense. And it is definitely true to an extent. And I think like you guys, Shulker, are like really good about these early game systems. And I think G2 were really, really good at these early game systems. And I think that you guys were like the only teams that could actually compete with them at this point. And I think not having such really strong early game systems is potentially why like splice appear to struggle a bit and it's also why sk actually look really good right now because when self-made uh actually does have tempo in his jungle matchup his lanes are either safe when they're pushing out to get the bounce back or they are able to do something with him and he's able to do something with their pressure and this is also where vitality strength has always come from is that when they do have pressure in lanes they are actually able to do something with their jungler and they have a they've always had this really strong system for that and that's always being what's made vitality really good uh, i think miffy's touched on like a really good point there but i also think I, I do think G2's jungle support has actually been really good at working with this. And I don't necessarily think that they were like monster behind everyone. I think you guys did outdraft them to an extent. In yeah, I games, mean, but... I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think G2 is a bad team at all. Yeah. You know, they, I just think like their wins have come from them just being like, just playing a lot better than their opponents. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't mean to say that they can't do what every other team in the league is doing, you know? Like mm. having some structure in the early game. They just well, don't necessarily have to like execute not every team all the in time the because yeah. five minutes into the game, they're executing their early game and then someone is like, oh, this guy died or oh, this guy died, you know? Yeah. Sure. And then they're like, oh, or, okay, well, I guess let's just like roll over yeah. them and, you know. But I think, I think G2's early system basically keeps their lanes uh, safe to push out or safe to get the bounce yeah. back and yeah, they I mean, are that's, able that's, to, yeah. That's, I think that's all you, you need. That, you you have that. Shulker have that. I think this is what makes you three like a cut above the rest because it's so consistent with you guys. Uh, and then I think with everyone else, it's just not as consistent. Or and with the teams like XL, for example, when you were playing against them, there, there were some int moments that would make them lose tempo and not be able to actually play that kind of style out even if they wanted to. But I think you guys have that like really solid and really secure. I think yeah. even had that when it wasn't going so well for you guys, like it just it's just if you weren't getting caught out in mid game, you'd have had a lot more victories than you than you have right now. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it's best of one, right? Like, yeah, it's hard to judge uh, all the teams from a best of one, but yeah, sure. Right, one of the teams we haven't talked about yet is the Schalke team. So, Finn, give me some thoughts. You played them in the last week. What do you think of the Schalke uh -huh. team? I think the Schalke team is just really, really good at playing their place. And I think that that's what really helped me now in the early process, a lot of these teams. Because I think a lot of these teams right now, new lineups, and like everyone is just figuring out how to... 
But I think Schalke just has a really good understanding of how they operate as a team. And I think that's why they're able to pick up so many solid wins because they already found their system, uh, which a lot of teams haven't found yet. Okay. The I Vitality game was really interesting for them, actually. Vitality versus Schalke, because... Uh, I agree that they have like a really solid system for them, but a lot of it is either about transferring mid pressure to bot or transferring bot pressure to mid, and then you basically fix Odo's waves, but Odo more or less keeps to himself until mid game comes around. Uh, Vitality completely disrupted that. Like they had a uh, really strong pressure in the 2v2 bot side, and their bot side could collapse mid really easily. It was Tom Kench Kaiser. Uh, so they didn't really have any of these windows that they were used to having, and they did actually seem to suffer a lot for it. Uh, also, it was this was one of those uh, Silas games, which became a bit of a meme. I don't think anyone in Europe has won with Silas I yet. I think almost no but, one in um, any region did. I think the only one that did was like, I think it was like Sandbox in Korea, oh, and even then oh, he like, had his well, shit... Oh, Cloud right. did, okay. I think the most... I think the more Barely anyone did, though. Is, is yeah. Silas won against TSM, actually. Well, right. <laughs> Oh really? I haven't yeah. watched any North American games this. Oh, that that one that one is worth watching for sure. Okay, okay, I'll check that out. But yeah, I think I think if you want to see what happens when you disrupt Shulker's system, uh, that Finn was talking about, I think you have to watch the Vitality Shulker game. Like, yeah, I don't think really they're a perfect team. Like, get anything. I think yeah. they have a lot of flaws. In play, and I think I think their bot lane we were strong good. enough to. Their to bot lane is really good. good. But yeah. if I think you. The, if you disrupt their ability to do anything with their pressure or to do anything around the map, I think that team starts collapsing. I think so much of it comes down to how well Memento and Ignar can work well together uh, when bot lane has pressure. And I think when that's disrupted and you can't even make anything happen mid to start relieving that because they have drafted this really easy collapse and Vitality are always so good at playing those kinds of compositions. Then, then they do seem to start being a bit more clueless and they do start bleeding and you can definitely take them down. Yeah, yeah I agree. Okay. Here's the thing, though. When when we're talking, like when we were discussing earlier, like the difference between the teams that have structure and some of them are teams that, you know, in theory, the players aren't necessarily the best players, but they have a better team than the other opponent. Can Schalke actually be like an LEC champion, Mithy? Could they win the league? Um, against like, me? Once you get to the series and you get to the big games and the finals, could Schalke really win the league? Against me. You mean if, if, like, if I hurt my hand or something? Or what? <laughs> yeah. Listen, mate. Did you hurt your hand in those first few weeks? Because I think, like, you hurt what? your hand and then one of your eyes went blind. That was looking at the minimap or something, right? And then you know, so, wasn't it something like that? I mean, yeah, but y y even, 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 even with my hand hurt, like, okay, you still win still, anyway. Yes. If I'm still yeah. playing, you know, like, it's, you just need your brain on. That's all you need. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean. I, I can't like I I definitely see see them being a, a strong team, you know. But I I I believe in my teammates. You know, they they can carry me with like yes. even even if I'm handless, I can probably roll my head on sure. my keyboard and we can <laughs> still still have a good shot, you know. So that's where all that practice playing video games on 120 ping satellite connection from the Canary Islands helps. Actually, even when the even when the reactions aren't there, you still got you know something going on. You're gonna be able to win somehow. I mean, everyone has their their strengths and their weaknesses. You know, I I don't I don't really I, I don't really excel at a, at a, at anything, but I I somehow get lucky with my teammates every now and again, and you know I get some I get some wins here and there. Better to be lucky than good. That's the saying we have in English. Better yeah. to be lucky than nice. good. Yeah. So, right, well, okay, well, some of the teams we've talked about, we just skipped over very, very quickly. So what about, uh, let me see, what was the team? What about talking more than about the uh, the Spice team? What do you think of this team, Tim? Give us some thoughts. I mean, I'm playing the, I'm playing them next week, so it's going to be interesting. I think actually next week we have a good chance, because I think the Spice team is like, I think they're solid, but I don't think they're like anything special. I think a team with a be good enough. I think I think a really decisive team will roll over them. I think there is a team that needs to, needs to rely on the enemies not being able to finish out the game to to actually get consistent. I think they rely on enemy mispositioning a lot, but as we talked about in the last show, they're really really good at forcing on your mispositionings and catching you out, and it, it can actually be really difficult okay. to play against them. 
uh, mm -hmm. in that way, and and they can snowball almost indefinitely off that. But they still are doing this thing where they are dead laning one side lane and they turn it into a slow push like it's season four. And b before you could maybe say, oh well, Vizacharchi's on tanks and he just wants to get grouping really fast. But this time he was playing Aatrox and Kennen and he was still doing it. And I was just looking either top or bottom. There was just this massive slow push wave coming in, and I just my my brain hurt at a point. And they're still doing this thing, and it sometimes works out, but it didn't really work out that well this week weekends and i i honestly don't know about that but i think that with the way that they are playing right now and with the strategy that they're using they'll be really good against all the lower tier teams they'll struggle mm -hmm. against uh, the top tier teams but if you're having a bad day splice will fucking destroy you for it and it can be really oppressive to play against we will see next weekend i think hey, Thor, Thor, when, when do you when do you release the this this thing the squad uh, yeah. next day or two i think Maybe tomorrow if it goes Next wrong? Ah. Yeah, why? Wait. Uh, You're going to say something know, bold? Come on. Okay, I'm going to predict. Okay. Uh, cause so, so it's judging from Rogue's games. Oh. They're going to beat they, they pick, they Splice. Pick, no, no, no. no I, I, I don't really care who wins that much. I, actually, no, I, I really want uh, Rogue to win. But... Uh -huh. um, yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just predicting uh, some, uh, some Braum, Braum pick. Really high, okay. up, really high up the list because uh, the last game I think <laughs> Splice first picked it, okay, yeah. and then and then uh, a Rogue picked Brom two games uh, last weekend. Yeah, so yeah, I, I'm I'm excited to see uh, who it's a broken who, champion. Who's gonna, gonna play it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it, it's good. Really yeah. prioritize it. Yeah, I think that that's that's gonna be fun. Who takes who takes the Brom? Okay. By the way, quick apologies to all North American viewers who had no clue what Vetra was talking about there with the, like wave manipulation parts and stuff, and like kept wondering what does that have to do with having a team fight like that. Actually, and they, and okay, so in come in, on, here we go, I've triggered him. Come on, oh god, oh god. They, oh god. They, <laughs> they played, they, so they they've been they've been really disgusting lately. But last weekend they were actually like some human games. You know, sure. Oofed. Sure. Yeah. Actually, TSM look. I'll give them. I was joking when I said, but they actually looked pretty decent last weekend. I have to say, they they weren't bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Turned it around a bit. <clears throat> TSM yeah, I mean, look, mate. It caught us on the last word. First pick, Yorick. Yeah, he was fucking yeah. about first pick, Yorick. It was yes. Pretty questionable, but they actually like not just that game, but I, I think I saw the first game too. Of like, I don't know who it was. I don't know. I watched like you know the, a few games and uh, I know game two. That, I think was the Team Liquid one, wasn't it? No, that, that was the TS, TSM Team Liquid was. Yeah, that's uh, what I meant. Yeah, yeah, no, but that was game three. So it was like game oh, two. Oh, right. Game one. Oh, you so meant in the order I, of the games they played, right? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I uh, I saw like like they were actually not playing bad, you know? Oh, wait there a second. Wait there a sec. Oh. Uh, no, way. Oh, I know what this is. There's, there's... Oh, the Discord bug or whatever you mean. Yeah. No, wait he's in the old H2K house between oh, right. like two and turn three. You, turn the, your webcam on again. The connection always like. Yeah, it's all right. We're, we're back again. Hello. Okay. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I thought I thought NA was getting better at the uh, League of Legends. I, I think they just like sucked the first few weeks, but uh, now they're okay, I guess. They're okay. <laughs> they play I'm a little bit slow. They play a little bit slow. Like, just a tad. I, I don't know. <laughs> Some would say the slowest in the entire world of League Even... of Legends at the moment. <laughs> Okay, from what you've said, even if your hand is broken, you should basically be a shoe in to go to Rift Rivals. So, are you worried about NA's progress? No, no. Right now? I I believe I I believe that like, it's not. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I'm just saying like <laughs> I, I have to believe in myself and my team. You know, no matter yeah. what. So I okay. can't just like if someone asks me like, is this team good to be you know like a winner of NA? No, of course not. I'm gonna win. You know, I have to believe that. It has to be ingrained. You know. So I can I can never I like, agree. yeah, but uh, but yeah, uh, I, I think it also comes to the drafts in NA. That that's what the, like that's why it looks a lot slower than EU, and uh, what, the reason, yeah, what, what, I mean, in, like what is affecting that in the draft? Do you think? Like they pick top, uh, they pick top tanks every game, no matter what, uh, sure. even though it's not always the best, you know, and uh, uh, they uh, they pick mages mid. A lot, and uh, like, yeah, there's like, there's not yeah. like, uh, there's not like Dravens or Lucians uh, running around, you know, that really snowball games or Mages bot or I mean, th there is some Mages bot, you know, but it's like on a on a farm duty kind of thing, not like a kill lane. 
So o overall, it just looks slow, and the junglers are also worse for the most part. Uh, like there's some good junglers, but like there's some that like you know are a little bit like not sure. really making forcing too many plays, and mid jungles are not willing to fight that much. So yeah, that's why they're slow. But I think it's mostly because of draft. Like in EU, you can't really draft that way because every top laner in Europe is like really really crazy about uh, like not really crazy, but like they, you know they pick. If you pick something, they will punish you. Yes. Like you have to pick good champs, you know. Or then you blind pick Orn. Yeah, for for example, it's not so easy, you know, to blind pick Orn or pick Sion. And even though they pick it in LCK, right? But you know, you have to like really be good in team fights with Sion if you don't want to get like. They basically pick it for the team fight comp, as far as I can tell in LCK. Y yeah, yeah, but. Yeah, I mean, it works for Griffin too, you know, so maybe that's why it, uh, maybe everyone in the A is uh, Griffin version uh, 0 0.1. But... <laughs> the the, the pre-alpha version. <laughs> Without, yeah. like, working model. You know, they've only coded, like, the first level in where the bots yeah. just go to the mid. But, but, but yeah, I don't think, like, NA is as bad as it looks. It's just, like, their drafts are... Like the champion pools for the players there are like a little bit worse than EU or Korea, so I'm assuming. So they they are okay. just like able to get away with like some blind picks that uh, are making the game really slow. That, that's that's what I think. Before we move off the splice topic, I don't want to ask you this. So this veteran spice. heavily heavily hypes Norskeren. This is someone he puts like in the contrast that you know he might not have even been in LEC this season. So do, what do you think of Norskeren as a player? I think I, I think he's I think he's alright. Like uh yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think he's pretty good. Uh he, he does his he does what he's supposed to do and uh he has like his shining moments too. He pops uh, off certainly, yeah. Yeah, he some yeah, he definitely sometimes pops off. Uh I mean sometimes he insists, but that's like just like everyone. I I, I think that, like I would wanna like, I would like to see him more on uh like a a more, you know, like Good team. No, no, I think that's he not what like I mean. A proactive champion or something. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. He, he, right. he's, okay. he's playing well, but he's playing well on like champs that you know they follow the team, and then you have yeah. your moment every now and okay. then. But I think he's played Alistar like twice, and he's really run it down uh, when it's like really hard to play this champ in in certain situations, you know. And I haven't really seen him play, you know, like Rakan or Gragas or like champion like sure. champions that are pretty hard. But yeah. he was playing Pike the other day, and he was doing like some crazy stuff and playing really well. So, probably yeah, him, no? his Rakan last season was uh, really good, and he hasn't actually had the chance to like shine on that yet this season. I, I mean, yeah, Rakan is pretty bad right now, so it's like, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think I think he I think he's I think he's pretty good. Uh, he looks better than I thought he was. Yeah. So, yeah, props to him. The thing is with you, you've rated all Koreans like above, so he can't possibly be top three in your opinion. Nor can Mickey X though. So mm. it's like he's I mean, starting at like fifth. Support so. support role is about consist. I mean, every role is really about consistency. But yeah, support role is about like if you in if you if you fuck up, you know, you you give a lot of like it, it's really bad, you know. Mm -hmm. So because uh, so, like you you don't have words for a long time. The enemy support can make a play somewhere else, and you have to like you know play the play the game from behind a little bit, and you lose like all that tempo. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, like I, I feel like you can really have a, a lot of a big impact in fights if uh, uh, the carries are matched equally, you know, and no one is like really outstanding. Uh, so I think sport is very important in that, in that sense, and I just feel like the Koreans are being more consistent right now. What do you think about Ignor's weekend then? <laughs> Because like both games weren't exactly his best games, uh, this split. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, Ignar. Uh, I don't know. I think he's champion pool. Like he wants to be the guy that is really the playmaker, and I think mm -hmm. he's like he had like a really bad uh, like draft for him. Not 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 for the overall game, but for him. Uh, in like the last few games, and that's why they've been losing a lot more. Yeah, I think Gragas teams... is his champ. No, no, I think he's really good on Gragas. It's just like Gragas is not always the best pick. 
Oh, right, okay. Yeah, you yeah. mean like in the composition, the compositions themselves weren't very good for his champ. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that, that's what I think, yeah. Yeah, I think the English <coughs> best like supported doing what like at his playstyle, you know. I think he yeah. has a really unique playstyle, but he's really, really good at that. But when he like wanders outside of his comfort playstyle, I think he's not looking that good. But I think within his playstyle, he's probably one of the best supports. Yeah, uh, yeah I think I'd agree with that. Uh, uh, cheers, man. Thanks. All right, cool. Nice. Congrats Thanks. again on the weekend. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Okay, so for this segment, obviously, Mithy had to go. Whatever, you know, make, make some sort of joke if you want about, I don't know, late game or some shit. You know, you can tie it in. There's probably a, there's probably a meme in there. So we, now what we're going to do is, that's too soon because we all know the vacation was secretly a cover for that little rat to go and join fucking G2, didn't it? Because obviously he didn't actually believe in Orin before, did he? Convenient how that works, isn't it? But anyway, he didn't, he didn't bother mentioning that before, you know, when he had all that sort of like... Yamato Cannon esque energy flowing from him, as it were, you know. <laughs> so, Finn, this is a section yeah. of the show where we need you to be a bit more forthcoming. But it's cause it's it's in your backyard, mate. We're going to talk yeah. about the the national leagues now. Yeah. So, for people who haven't followed it at all, because obviously you know the sub system to the LEC, explain to us the setup, like the league you play in, what the system is like, what's the format of the national league for you like. I mean, the problem with the, the main problem with National League space is that they're, they're all offline. I mean, online for now. Like, they're yeah. not going to a studio, which is making teams get a lot, get, getting away with a lot worse environments, uh, working environments, which kind of is level down for now. Okay. But generally, for now, we play games just like the LCS, just online. Like, it's basically the same format as you play in the LEC. I think a big thing there is that in the UK League, that's also going to be the case for the playoffs as well. Uh, they have to do the entire thing online now. Really? I mean, that's uh, really yes, bad. The studio's not uh, ready. Really? Really? So. In League of Legends, our teams, because obviously I don't know this, because the last time we everyone really played for real online was like half a decade ago. In, in League of Legends, since in theory it's a game where like ping isn't as insane as other games, are there teams that are just mad <coughs> onliners? Like, you know, their teams have never been to LAN and they're just, they're going to spank you if it's online, but they would never beat you if it's offline. Is it like that nowadays? I mean, no. I mean, of course it comes with like, the younger the players, the more risk there are for them to, sure. to, to, to not show, but yeah, perform worse when the pressure is on and they play away from the comfort. But I think generally there's not that big of a difference in performance when you play online respect to the uh, offline. Okay. So yeah, tell I... us about your... Okay, go on, Brian. No, I was going to say I definitely agree with that. This is why like the Magic Felix example was like so significant for a bit because that was one of the only examples you could think of where you could trace it that way. Um, but yeah. generally speaking, I do want to say like the French League and the French system and the way that the French system was done uh, for the last few years, um, it's been like basically just major LAN events, yeah. and that all accum you accumulate points on all of the LAN events, and that all helps your eventual overall standings to get into EU Masters and all that stuff. Yeah. So the French league, or uh, well, the French system, is probably a better way to put it, has always like benefited this kind of thing a lot more. I think yeah. so. You were never really going to get that kind of disparity there. And I think yeah. that was always a really good thing about the French system. I mean, in the Spanish league, you had some games where you went, uh, you, you played maybe two or three games yeah, per split weird. offline yeah. and the rest uh, online. It was a bit weird. Mm. But I think generally, I think the French league has a pretty good system for for this reason. Because I think it brings the, more, the viewers more, more into the first well. Because if you see the names and yeah. not their faces, it doesn't really make you connect to them in the same way. And you also had stuff like Gamers Origin, for example, had a ridiculous year and a half long streak where they won basically every single LAN event, and you don't really have that with the other leagues. You have like Mad Lions win two splits in a row, right? It's nothing compared to like Gamers Origin won four LANs in a row. Like yeah. that's like a definite, like they've come on yes. the scene, they are the big deal. I always felt that the French team had better storylines in that regard. UK yeah. scene kind of had that because they had so many different leagues and tournaments going on. Uh, but it was yes. nowhere near as good and refined as that. And also no one fucking watched any of them because they had like 100 viewers max, 80 viewers per. I mean, the UK scene for me is really, really weird because I don't think yeah. there are a lot of good players there. And like the good players are mostly imports with a few standouts like, 
I don't know, X Matty, I think is really, really good. Yes. I think there are some good UK players, but, but like both Yeah, both X Matty and Tosa also though really yeah. like came to their own and you could definitely say they are really good players when they joined the French league in two different instances, X Matty with Gentside and Toaster with Gamers Origin. So yeah. those were the times where you could definitely yeah. say that they were really strong players. You, it's it was always difficult to say when they were in the UK scene if yeah, they yeah. are really good or if it was just if a you're UK league smurfer doesn't mean you're a smurfer overall. Like, yeah, easy. yeah. Okay, so but being now as... it, yeah, go on. Uh, just as a last point, now the UK league's been taken over by LVP, who ran the Spanish league. So now they're right. basically the same format, but yeah. UK is entirely online as is. Ah, right. But, okay. Yeah. So now it's not this whole weird weird crap that they had before right so being as you play Finn in the Ultra League which is the Polish League yeah. and I noticed that this is actually a league which aside from your team barely has imports it basically just yeah. is Polish players right did you actually know most of these players and teams like were they around your peer group anywhere beforehand I mean the top teams I knew some players but I think there is a problem that a lot of Polish players go outside of the region I think if every Polish player stayed within the region, this region could be really, really good. But like a lot sure. of good players, like Ice Beast now going to Spanish scene, and Mystique's playing in the UK, like first region overall. Because in the bottom, t- the bottom teams, I don't I didn't really know any players except for the K1 trick, you know, the place, uh, which is actually high elo. But the rest of the players are like really unknown for me, okay. and I think that's a problem for the scene because. That means that the best Polish players aren't playing in the league, which kind of kind of kind of like takes the the national part away from it. Sure. We also have to say that like the way that these uh, regions handle their residency rules, uh, they do have like the same kind of import slot thing that LEC has. But if you just live in the region and you are in yeah. the region, then you count as. Yeah. You count as like a a, okay. a, a nationalized like presumably like that's like imports. to incentivize people to eventually make it offline and have team houses and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think also that it's literally only there because it makes it easier for tax purposes. Um, like there's actually a huge okay. thing there. Um, Very cynical but... reason, but yeah, <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one though. I think mean, that's like the practical uh, benefit. Yes, of it. but but theoretically speaking, you you could just you could just hire five Koreans and move them to Spain and they could all compete in the Spanish league and there would be absolutely zero issue there and i do think that whereas it might hurt like the individual polish scene i don't necessarily think that having this rule in place hurts what national league has become which is the underbelly of europe and the training grounds for players like finn to venture come from the lc i actually think it, it's beneficial in that regard sure. uh, that the system is as it is uh and there was also another thing i was going to say that i've kind of just forgotten about so, so just uh so just move on Okay, fair enough. Funny thing is, when I actually look at the the rosters in the Polish league, because actually, famously, people people will forget now because not as many in the LCS. But Poland's had a lot of good League of Legends players over the years. If you go back long enough, like I recognise some of these players, admittedly from many years ago, but a bunch of the players are still here. Yeah, Bukistal, Neek, obviously Super AZ. If you go back far enough, there's quite a few of. Yeah, well, yeah. obviously he was yeah. a team killer, yeah. but you know that's why we play in the fucking <laughs> Polish league half a decade later, isn't he? What an asshole! Oh, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big meme in the Polish scene right now. It's, it's very fun. I've no doubt. Right. Okay. What about this then? So your team is undefeated in the national yeah. league. What is it actually like in terms of like parity in the league? Like, are the teams actually generally good, or is it like there's some really good ones and some are just clueless? What is it like? I mean, I think some teams. Would be able to to compete with like other national leagues like Pride and the EPC are two teams that I think are like decent compared to national league standards. But I think the rest of the teams are cut below the rest, and I think our team just has such a dominant mid jungle duo that we can like roll over any team just by playing that. We can have this mid jungle and three random players who to win games. Okay. I mean, why is it, why isn't yeah. Larson in the LA, LAC by the way? Yeah, uh, he's in school. He's finishing school. Ah, okay. Very Swedish in that sense. If, yeah. if he was from some... See, that's where, in many ways, he's betrayed the league. You should just quit school and just be a, just be a League of Legends player. Yeah, um, I mean, I think Rogue will be a far more interesting team for Summer. I think Summer Rogue will be top five, at least. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Are you hinting that they will just put Larson into the middle? No, I'm saying not they will put them in, that they yeah. will be 
substitutions back right. and forth. Forgiven, Larson have just been confirmed on yeah, this. That's so it. Far. That's a hundred percent confirmed. Thank you. And on top of that, they're going to shit on the league. Not really, but in contrast, that to what Arsenal now. would shit on the league. I am just going to say that. I mean, I just want to say that one big reason why I think you guys were stomping. You said mid jungle, but inspired has honestly been a, a cut above every other person he's played against. Like every other jungler yeah. in Ultra Liga right now. Uh, they they've basically abandoned the quadrant of the map to like camp someone like you got camped on your first game you remember this and, uh, but you just abandoned the entire bot side for that and whereas inspired's being incredibly efficient at like every stage of the game and it's it's something that no other jungler has been like there and yeah. then we, you you mentioned teams like EPC for example their bot lane was base was basically gifting the game to your bot lane so like these other teams have quite visible weaknesses in certain players and the way that they're playing jungle is obviously far away from how Miffy is saying that you should structure like an early game, whereas uh, Rose was much closer to how you actually want to be doing things. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think it's inspired as I think it's inspired as probably the player that impressed me by far the most. I think this player he's only seventeen right now, but he will for sure be one of the best Europe has seen in the coming three years. Like he's, he's such an insane talent. It's actually ask, a bit scary how good it is. Can I ask what kind of like comms uh, he had in there? Like what kind like is is he the kind of jungler that is like trying to dictate what the early game is like in comms? Or is he I mean, the kind of jungler that's just is, reacting really well to how the is, game is going and doing his thing? What is his most like insane talent, I think, is how precise and clean his comms are. He doesn't okay. like waste time. He's always very clear and he and he knows exactly what he needs to say. That's really interesting. Okay, you could just re you should just replace the entire Rogue LEC with the Rogue Ultra Liga, and they they I mean, would. I think I think we I think both teams have things they can. I mean, both players, like both me and Kikis, Larson uh, Senkux and Inspired Kikis, have things they can learn from each other, mm -hmm. which I think is really big. Okay, right, veteran. Uh, one thing I wanted to know because I often wonder about this is like. If, if you're someone who's trying to keep up with these national leagues, yeah. like, how do you do it? Do you just watch a couple of the leagues? Do you just only watch the premier matches? Like, how do you personally I try and keep up with it? I only watch Griffin and Sandbox in LCK, and I sometimes watch IG in LPL, but I've really not caught up on LPL that much. Okay. I don't watch any North America, and I don't watch any minor regions. I basically just watch European League and okay. European National Leagues. So that basically... Yeah, all right. you, you have to cut out the other regions, basically, sure. if, you want yeah. to be, if you want to be doing this. There, there are basically games every single day, though. Yeah, uh, I mean, yes. I think in the middle of the week, there are like... I mean, one problem right now is that almost every league is on at the same time. Like, between Monday and Wednesday, I think, and like, at 18+, plus, every, le every league is playing. So, you can't have to choose which one to watch, but... There are a lot of games to watch, and you can't watch but them But it, it, it starts somewhat late in the day. It starts at like 3, 4 p.m. is when all the leagues start. So there's still like a full morning if you want to catch up on certain games yeah. beforehand. That's true. There are, I obviously prioritize the Academy Leagues, because those are the guys that we're most likely to have on the show at some point. And those are also the guys that, that are currently trying to consolidate as much talent as possible. There are obviously top teams in all the leagues that aren't just academy teams. So Mad Lions is a really obvious example of that I right now. They have as well. Who? LDLC. LDLC. Oh yeah, LDLC are basically destroying everybody. Like I thought Gamers Origin would put up more of a fight and they got wasted in 20 minutes. It, it was absolutely disgusting, actually. LDLC is pretty uncontested. Dejoko's on that team, by the way, right. um, doing really well. And uh, Comp is one of those players that was being uh, talked around a lot, but he, he he was like still contracted in the last offseason, so it's kind of difficult for anyone else to pick him up. But Comp looks phenomenal as an up-and-coming AD carry. Comp is like, really, really, really good. Yes, yeah. Like he probably, he probably, he he's gonna be the next guy like Jeskler, like Crown Show, who's going to make the leap. If uh, anyone has any sense, and if there are any AD carries on certain bottom tier teams that need to be replaced, I think Comp um, and Xmati are the ones to keep an eye for. Yeah, I like yeah, I like Xmati a lot. Uh, I do think Comp is a cut above him right now, though. But I Possibly, do like Xmati yeah. a lot. I think I I. Have, I mean, this is this is inside info. I know X Matty's comms are actually really strong, though, and I don't know anything about comps, but X Matty actually does add a lot to the team in that sense. 
By the way, what, what is the situation like between the leagues? Like, do you guys, if you're doing well in the Polish league, do you get to, to scrim all the best teams from the other national leagues? How does it work in that sense? Do you I mean, scrim other teams in the Polish league? I mean, generally, we only scrim teams from the other leagues. Like, we don't really scrim Polish teams, the Polish teams at all uh, right now. Because first, we compete with them. At first, we don't really learn much from them either. So we... we I think generally a lot of teams prefer to scream teams outside of their own league just because of the... I mean, unless they, there are some really good teams they can learn from in the main, sure. main league, I think generally... Did, you were you ever teams. actually able to... When you were in the, the Ultra League <coughs> team this is, were you ever able to actually get scrims against LEC teams? I mean, the, the, the situation is a bit complicated, so I can't really talk about it. <laughs> okay. B bizarre. It was kind of a yes or no a well, question, really. But okay. <laughs> did you? Did you guys? He secretly did. Other obviously, national league teams. Yes. Okay. Were there any other top laners that like caught your eye? Is like this guy is actually really good. No. Yeah, I, I, I figured that was coming when you paused. <laughs> uh all right. I mean, the the state of top lane right now, I would say that like Yoppa and Arome are still like the top top laners on the same level as like Finn was. Did you? Did you? Yeah, you obviously would have scrimmed like I. I no wait, is Ice Beast actually playing right now? He's playing with the riders. Yeah. Okay. Did you scrim them? Uh, no. No. Okay. So he's like the only other guy that I would kind of put up there. I actually thought Arome and Yoppa should be in the LEC uh, already by now, but... Um... Fucking trash, just fucking love <laughs> like, That's how you know Vandas spent way too much time in the LCS, because that wasn't even Korva. <laughs> he said it in English, for fuck's sake. That's fake as fuck. That was, that, was, that was staged right there. No Polish person ever swears in English, I can tell you that. They order fucking McDonald's and say Korva. It's no way. It's no way. It's no uh, way. He knows a lot words in English. Well, I, I guess he did spend a lot of time with Forgiven, so maybe he sort of got trained in that way, right? <laughs> <laughs> to the English flame. I think Roma Yoppa are two like, good top laners, and they have a lot of potential, but I think both have shown some some common issues. Especially Yoppa has been like on the same level right now, with showing the same issues as he has, has been doing for a long time. Okay, what do you think those issues are then? I think he has a tendency to be a bit careless. I don't think he has a good understanding how to play the the map from like a tank, I mean, more of a supportive role. I think he has a hard time playing weak side. I mean, not generally weak side, but I think he has some issues playing away from the main center of action. Which is why I think Mad Lions is really good for him, because he has a very supportive bot lane, so they can focus a lot on the top side, which is, I think I think he'll do really well with Mad Lions. So I yeah, I think player, I think give it the attention, he's performing really well. I was actually really looking forward to seeing how Mad Lions top side of the map faces off versus your top side of the map. So Mad Lions have they have Blue Azor, Yoppa, and Pretty. So that's probably like what some of the best top jungle mid that you could find. And then you guys obviously had a really strong top jungle mid as well that we now never got to get to see face off against each other because you're swapping players left, right, and center. Uh, but that, that's probably the strongest top side in the league. And they have Samux, and I can never remember his Falco. name. Yeah, Falco uh, in support. Uh, so that that's their bot side. They're obviously trying to play really hard for mid to top. Uh, and that's a really good team for someone like Yoppa, who, being one of those players who would like to pick Fiora a lot, we shall say. Yeah. And he, yeah, he, he, he's he's one of those kinds of players. I actually think he's really strong in that regard. It's interesting that you say that, because Finn, uh, Finn was actually a player who, so oh, I'm not yeah. sure if you remember this for him, but Finn was on the NIP roster that almost beat Forgiven's Origin roster. Oh, and right. Back then, he was still like this guy with like five million games of played on his solo queue account and about twenty games of everything else. <laughs> he was playing Sion Nar mostly in that tournament. Uh, so well actually, fun. for you to go from that to like the range that you were showing in Ultra League is actually really impressive oh, because in Ultra League he was bringing out Ergot, he's bringing out Victor, he's playing those matchups really, really well. Uh, so it's not so his channel kind of actually expanded a lot faster than a lot of his other counterparts have because yeah, Yoppa hasn't really come out of this whole slip pushing fetish fantasy world that he lives in. He's really, really good at that. 
but he hasn't had like a like the kind of accelerated growth that Finn has had. That that's kind of made Finn's rise in Ultra League so impressive. Um, so I figured that you would kind of criticize that aspect of Yoppa. When it comes to Aroma, though, I think Aroma is a lot more versatile in this regard. I think he's actually like one of the smarter top laners in National League, if not the smartest. So what would you say to that? I think Aroma has a harder time, because I think he's a bit like Yoppa, in a sense. I think he's more willing to play the tanks, which is, I think, mm -hmm. is pretty good. But I think he needs more time to to nurture as a top player like that. A top player that plays weak side, a top player that sacrifices for his team. I think he has a team to, to really grow in that area though. I think with his team he will need to take on that role. Because I think that team won't be able to function as a triple threat with that bot lane. Uh, so I think uh, it's actually going to be really fun seeing how Rom going to play this team with this team like in three months. Because right now they look a bit lost, but I think they can become really, really good. The Splice yeah, so Academy. Aroma is on Splice Academy, which Freeze is on right now. It's probably yeah. the best point of reference. Um, so, and they're both in Spanish League, so both Aroma and Yop will actually be facing off against each other a lot. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I think, I think they're outside of those guys. Uh, top lane is actually in a bit of a dire place right now in Europe, but I do think that those two guys are like could potentially make it to the LEC already. I think Yoppa should have already had an offer, to be honest. Although I know what, is, Yoppa... what would the reason for that be, though? Like, presumably, there's loads of players, so there must be some players with talent, right? Is there something about the meta or the way the game's played that that's making it harder for like newer top lane talent to emerge? I think uh, standards, at least. I mean, I think top lane is a role that really, really needs experience for you to become a really good player. I think that's the reason why. Or so, the fuck is he doing? <laughs> I think that's the reason why there are so many. I mean, why, why there are so few successful rookie top laners. Because I think a top laner, like you can see all these really good top laners, so much impact, you know? These have played for so long time. And they really know how to deal with every situation given to them. Yes. But I think a lot of the, the rookie top laners really crumble when they don't know how to approach the given situation. And I think that's why top lane is a role that really, really needs time to become comfortable at, the, at a competitive level. Okay. That's it does seem like that's a role if you look historically. Like the people who have a lot of experience, like you can just play forever, basically. Yeah, yeah, you it's know. the role with a lot of oldies in it. Like how yeah. old was Marvin even when he like joined? He was, he was pretty old. I think <laughs> he was probably like about 27, maybe 26 yeah. when he joined, mate. Yeah. There was that guy on Samsung who was almost 30 and he was top. Yeah, he was, top. yeah. yeah. and now yeah. he's a coach. Uh, in fact, yeah. I think even Sword on, um, I think even Sword on Griffin's pretty old, isn't he? Yeah. Well, do you think it is about top that requires you to have to have this much experience? Then, because uh, it, it's like you feel like jungle would require you to know a lot about like every lane and how all of those lanes actually sure. play out and stuff, and would theoretically be the more experienced based role. But for you, it's top. I mean, I think top is a role where you can get away with having slightly worse mechanics than your lane opponents mm -hmm. because of the champions you play here. Not Generally, the meta is a bit slower for top. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes and goes. Like Sometimes it's lower rise and cast your top, where the more mechanically gifted top players will show their prowess. But I think generally, top lane is more about reading the situation and... Uh, knowing what role you have to play for the team, like know, knowing when you have to play up, knowing when you have to give two waves just because you shouldn't die, etc., mm. etc. I think it really just comes with experience. Sure, I guess I guess a large amount of it is that it's far more punishing if you just don't play the wave properly in top lane, and this is yeah. like a more fundamental aspect of the game as opposed to like just outplaying someone on an assassin mid because they stepped up a little bit improperly yeah. and it's like the, those opportunities take a lot less time to set up in mid lane whereas in top lane you're always playing the long game essentially in that regard yeah. so i can see it being a bit more of a cerebral role in that sense sure right, i have a question then it which is right generally is there already a hierarchy as to which the leagues actually are better? Or is it just like, you know, in some league that might be terrible, there might be an amazing team, and then another uh, league's like, they've a bunch of good teams, but like no one amazing. How has it generally been in that sense? I mean, 
I think it's really hard to say. I think generally the Spanish, French, and German are at like the higher on average. But I think Rogue Academy, like the roster we had, was the best team by far in mm. any national league. I uh, agree with that. And I think UK, I think Excel and Fnatic both are pretty good. Do you I have a theory, they're... Finn? Because this is what I want to ask you, right? Obviously, you hail from Sweden, right? Yeah. The Nordic has their own national league. Why <laughs> is generally Sweden not very strong in League of Legends? Do you have a theory for that? I mean, I think... I, I mean, I could say that CSGO is like the main game to go. for sure. a lot of Swedes. Yeah. If you put it straight, if you go into Inferno online right now, 90% yeah, yeah, yeah. of people are playing CSGO yeah, for sure. Exactly. Like, if yeah. you go to Inferno online on a Saturday weekend, it's like yeah. 70% CSGO, maybe 15% League, and then the rest are irrelevant, you know? Fortnite, yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Go, you know, but, with the McDonald's uh, back box next to them and the Happy Meal, you know. I mean, there are a lot of good Swedish <laughs> players as well. Just not as high a level as the Danish, I guess. But I still think sure. there are a lot of good Swedish players. So I don't think like Sweden is a weak region in League of Legends either. Okay. Is the actual Nordic National League good? No. Why is that? Because every good Nordic player plays in other leagues. Because the Nordic League right, was established I guess that does make this. sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I played I, one split in Nordic, but hmm. I just think most good Nordic players, I mean, Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, even Finnish, they play in other leagues. Yeah, I mean, no. to be fair, actually, I mean, half of them are the LCS. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, fair enough. Okay. I, I guess there's so a limited amount of people. So actually, if we, if we take this idea that Sweden is like all about CSGO and like the Nordic countries in general are all about all of these other games and that that's where the big audience is, uh, then the fact that the top players go to other regions makes a lot of sense because the national league, the national league system, uh, never really began as a national league system. It was always that all of these third party tournament organizers realized that there was a significant fan base that Riot wasn't tapping mm. into. So, like at the start of the show, Foreign, you flamed all these regions for sure. not going in English yes. language. But yes. the reason for that is because you have LVP come in Spain and realize Riot isn't doing a Spanish broadcast. Yes. There's a huge Spanish-speaking fan base that is being completely sure. neglected by Riot that is fair game for us. So then they start doing their own broadcasts of uh, League of Legends in Spanish, and then they transition this into the National League system. ESL do the same thing in the UK. They pitch up a tent in France. Everyone pitches up a tent in France because they realize there's a gigantic French-speaking population that's gig into League of Legends that's been neglected by Riot. In and Germany, they speaking yes, English. So. Same thing there. No one competes with them sure. because yeah. the tax is so horrible over there. And in Poland, you have, you have people doing this as well. But all these were independently set up, independent of each other, because they could sell sure. ad space to companies that wanted the Spanish audience, that wanted the national audience. And this was something that Riot couldn't reach. Yes. because they were doing a broad-based English broadcast. Yeah. So all of these places start up like that. In Sweden, they don't have their audience for League of yeah. Legends because they're so into all of these other games. So why, why would anyone have come in and made the effort to do it when they see all these other games that they could do it for instead? If, if it's legit, like 99% people are into CSGO and stuff, why wouldn't you just make another CSGO and try to grab a little bit of that market share yeah. rather than compete for the 1%? So then obviously all these other regions are going to have gig and money and Spain and France are normally assumed to be a cut above the rest because they have the most money like French, French scene in particular was paying like 10k salaries to certain players this, on Millennium. Yeah, I, I, I mean, see that. Oh, yeah. You you know exactly what I'm talking about. I said it was no, but the thing about that that like, kills me is like does the guy who made that deal not know that he could have got the same player exactly the same player for just less of less money like he basically bid him against himself as far as i can tell <laughs> <laughs> but um the the big thing the big thing uh when it comes to all this though is that spanish teams generally do quite well french teams kind of end up as 50 50 but somehow there's always been a polish team that has just come up and shit stomped everyone and made it like made a huge deep run and poland has somehow managed to cultivate like a ridiculously strong top tier roster almost every sure. round of eu masters and almost every year of national league that's always been like a really weird oddity there that that, that, that team always seems to start outpacing uh, the french league and i would say i guess it's an oddity except that we have the 
big example of North America as a region has all the money, but doesn't produce all of the talent. People sure. kind of pitch up their tent in North America and use it as a retirement home. Maybe a similar thing is happening in National League. And when you do think about it, that's where most of the retired LCS players are. They're now playing in French National League. I only just realized that. So actually, the analogy works really fucking well. Whereas in Poland, you actually have some really strong players. Self made bad, for example, was a Polish player that moved over to, to Spain for Mad Lions. Uh, you brought up Mystiques. Like, they actually do have some really strong players that do end up going to other regions for the money. Yeah. 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 Uh, but Poland has actually been like a really strong source of players for a while. And while Sweden is a really strong source of players, their league is never going to get up because these sure. leagues aren't created to cultivate talent for the LCS. They are created to cultivate advertising space for the regional language and it just never existed there why yeah. if you want if you want all of this like a cad system issue solved where like you're basing the whole team in berlin so you have to have free minimum players of the nationality and stuff then you would be asking riot to take direct control of the national league system i don't really want that because right. so this is kind of like control yeah. has never worked out to be honest this is, this is kind, kind of like, like the compromise of giving an open system to some degree yeah yeah like i i kind of like things as they are though as they are right sure. now riot is basically where the british empire was when they were just licensing out entire regions and licensing out monopolies and they're like all right lvp you now own the nice. UK league. You have the whole thing, no one else can come in on your thing. ESL, fine, you have Germany, no one else really wants it anyway because the tax is disgusting. Like, there's, they're there at that stage. I'd rather they stay at that stage and just start assuming direct control. Uh, okay. And you're going to have to complain about the, the regional languages being the way they are, but National League wouldn't Some of that was a joke, obviously. If it wasn't. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I'm so, obviously. A lot, a lot of the things in the first two minutes of most of these shows, lighthearted. You know. This video and all of the content on my channel is kindly supported by Dean Tanglis, Andreas Snazor Westerland, Gardner Wilson, James Harding, Ollie J, Tobias Bernasconi, Nate DOGG, Travis Greb, Tristan Jones, and as always, a special thanks goes out to Jerky's Minion. Do you want to take part in an esports discussion with yours truly? Would you like teasers for some of my upcoming content? See who the guests are going to be. Do you want to ask me a question for my monthly video AMA? Perhaps you'd like to suggest a guest you'd like to see my content or a topic to discuss. Well, if so, then put your money where your mouth is and join the Screluminati today at the Patreon link in the description box below.